Hello everyone, back tuning in to the preliminary winter 2015-2016 update for the United States of America from gazwebbies.com. We're going to look at two or three uh, different aspects um, to see how they're shaping up uh, for this year. We're going to be looking at ENSO and uh, sea surface temperature anomalies in the Pacific Ocean. Also have a look at solar activity uh, as well. Um, just to give us an early sort of heads up about where things could be heading uh, for the winter uh, of the 15-16 in America. This isn't the final say on the matter by any means, uh, but the actual forecast from GazWebbies.com for America, uh, the winter of 2015-2016, will be released in the middle of October uh, at the uh, website. I'm going to provide a link uh, with the video here in the description box um, to GazWebbies, to the uh, page where we're going to be issuing the uh, forecast uh, for America for winter 2015-16. You can also find this video and a very in-depth and long sort of written report uh, that will be uh, based on this video uh, as well. So if you don't want to watch the video, if you want to read the written report, um, click the link uh, that's in the description box. It'll take you off to the page at GazWebbies that deals with uh, the weather for uh, America for this winter. But the actual forecast from Gas Office will be issued um, in the middle of October. But things are shaping up to be very interesting, I think, this uh, winter. We've had a couple of really cold winters in much of the north and the east of the states, of course. Will it be uh, a third? Uh, a third one. We'll have a look at some uh, different aspects in a moment. But before we go on with that, just to quick mention the ads, Gas Office is a commercial enterprise. So we've got uh, advertising on the website. Um, if you can have a uh, click through the uh, through the link uh, uh, through the link widgets, um, you'll be having a page the website. There, there are links to articles, and you can go off and read the article. And because you're clicking from guys, it's where that article is. Get a remedy fee, and what you're doing is also video ads within the written content. Um, so if you're at the website and you're reading the written content, you have been reading the written content. You'll probably have noticed a video ad opening out um, within that written content. If you give it a quick watch. You'll be able to pay the website once you've watched it. It'll close back up again. So uh, thanks very much uh, for doing that. So uh, just going to start with the sea surface temperature anomalies first of all. Now the big talking point, I start off with this in the written report of course at the website, the big talking point um, for this winter, sort of a big background signal if you like, uh, is El Nino. And that's been signalled by this uh, huge mass of warm water that is uh, building up here in the equatorial part of the Pacific Ocean. So just here we've got Peru, and over here uh, we've got Indonesia. And between Peru and Indonesia, we've got this warm water upwelling through the, uh, through the equatorial Pacific, particularly over here on the eastern side at the moment of the equatorial Pacific. That is uh, El Nino, and uh, that's going to be the main sort of back ground signal for this winter, not just in America, but the whole of the world, it is going to be an El Nino winter. I'll have a look at that, um, <coughs> excuse me, in a few moments. Uh, we'll have a look at the CFS V2 to see what it's sort of predicting for El, uh, El Nino as we go through the remainder of the year and into winter. El Nino does have impacts um, for America. Now, another part of the Pacific Ocean that's very important is this area up here um, on the uh, northeastern part of uh, the Pacific Ocean. Uh, we've got all of this warm water around here. This has been an omnipresent feature uh, in this area for the past couple of winters, actually. Uh, we had it for 13-14. We had it for 14-15. It's still there now, and I'm doing these preliminary thoughts in July 2015. I suspect this will carry on at least to the early part of winter. It may fade through the winter, um, but at least to the early part of winter, I do think this is likely uh, to carry on, uh, this warm water. And what this does uh, is, it, is, is it promotes ridging uh, in this sort of area. So around Alaska, sort of Pacific Canada, uh, some parts of northwestern America, this sort of area just here, it promotes ridging uh, through that area. And what tends to happen and we've seen it over the past couple of winter, uh, past couple of winters, is that we get the jet stream going in a northwest to southeasterly type direction through uh, the states, 
and we tend to get a trough of low pressure in the northeast uh, of America. And if that warm water does persist up there in the northeast and part of the Pacific Ocean, I would expect a broadly similar pattern to the past couple of winters to occur in terms of that big ridge uh, up there and the trough in the east and the northeast of uh, the states. There are a couple of complicating factors to this, though. One is El Nino. The other is what's going on in the Atlantic Ocean. I'll just very quickly scroll over. See, we have got a very cold uh, Atlantic Ocean in this area uh, just here. Much of the northern Atlantic has gone cold. Um, and that sort of goes against blocking uh, around Greenland, um, to be honest. So the North Atlantic Oscillation is not expected uh, to be negative this winter. We're not expecting to get a lot of uh, high pressure up here. Uh, instead, cross that out. Instead, uh, we're expecting to get a lot of low pressure in uh, this sort of area. Uh, certainly with the North Atlantic uh, seas of temperature is looking as they are anyway if they persist of course to winter which they may not do. However for America that's not really all that important. We have had a positive NAO for the past two winters uh, 13, 14 and 14, 15 and both of those uh, winters despite being uh, positive North Atlantic Oscillation winters um, were very cold for uh, large parts of America. So uh, it's the North Atlantic Association is more of an issue, I think, for uh, the UK and Europe. It's less of an issue uh, for, America, for America because you can get uh, very cold weather in winter from two, uh, from two sort of drivers. The ridge over Greenland helps, but also the ridge over Alaska uh, will help as well. So uh, I think if we see this, this sort of seasonal temperature anomaly pack continue through to winter, it is a signal uh, for northern and eastern parts of America to have uh, a cold winter once again. We'll have a look at solar activity again. This is more important for the UK and for America, but solar does p uh, play a part uh, in the conditions in uh, America. So we're coming out of solar maximum. Uh, solar maximum of the solar cycle, solar cycle 24, occurred just here uh, early in 2014. You see that the trend since and has been very gradually downwards, although we have had uh, fairly regular spikes upwards as we're trending down, if you see what I mean. Um, as we get through to the winter, we should be in this sort of area just here. That's where the trend line uh, wants to take um, solar activity as we get through to winter of 2015-16. Um, and how does that compare? Well, it's probably where we was. Uh, it's probably where we was around 20. 10, 2011, uh, just here, 2010, 2011, that sort of uh, area just there. If we go back to the last solar cycle, it's probably where we was, again, coming off the solar maximum, the solar maximum of solar cycle 23 occurs just here. It's probably uh, where we was in this sort of area uh, just here, or maybe just there. So somewhere around 2004, 2005, um, I think that's generally uh, the kind of area that we're going to be in uh, with the uh, current solar uh, cycle uh, in terms of going out of the solar maximum, gradually we're moving down into solar minimum. I think solar activity will become a lot more important next winter and then the two or three winters after that as we go down into this area just here, which will take us into solar minimum. Solar minimum, of course, is uh, something that goes with uh, a lot of cold winters, not just in America, but in the UK, Europe, and Asia as well. You tend to get a lot more blocking uh, over the northern latitudes as you get through into the solar minimum. And that will be starting really from next winter and then going through to around 2019, uh, 2020. But for this winter, we've still got relatively, not especially strong, but we've still got relatively uh, strong solar activity, which will have an effect on the congestion. But as I say, it's less important for America. We was up here uh, in the winter of 2014, and you know that that was a brutally cold winter for uh, many northern and east parts of states. What's happening with the El Nino? Uh, well, it looks like we're going to peak at very strong uh, levels. Um, so uh, this is from a CFS D2, uh, and we're uh, going up to here. Uh, in terms of the forecast. So we're going above 3 degrees uh, by the time we get through to around October 
for November. That will be a record break for the car. I think it's going over the top, but it's staying consistent with it. It's not backing off from it, from this. If anything, it's probably perhaps getting a little bit more extreme, actually, as time is uh, going on. But I do think it's a little bit uh, over the top, and I would suspect in the end will probably come out uh, somewhere around here, uh, maybe. That will still be a very strong El Nino, and will be the strongest since 1997 uh, 19. 98. I'm um, also expecting a Madoki or a Madiki El Nino. So this is region 3.4, uh, which is through the central part of the Ecuador Pacific, that area just there. Um, if you have a look at region 1.2, uh, which is this area just here, it's the warmest part of the uh, Ecuador Pacific at the moment. It's this area just here in the eastern part of the equatorial uh, Pacific. And that's saying, as you can see from the colours, it is uh, the hottest part of the equatorial Pacific at the moment. But if we have a look at the forecast for region 1.2, you can see that uh, it, the model is predicting temperatures to be dropping uh, in that area from where we are now. So this is where we are now in terms of the sea surface temperature uh, anomalies. By the time you get through to the end of the summer and into the autumn, we're down here. Um, big drop takes place. <coughs> Excuse me down to around one degree uh, above average uh, in terms of the anomaly from where we are now, which is uh, around 2.7 uh, degrees uh, above average in terms of the anomaly. So clearly we're having a cooling trend through the second half of the year in the eastern part of the Actura Pacific. At the same time, we're warming um, in the west, in the western central part of the Equatorial Pacific, this is a Madoki or a Madiki uh, El Nino, and uh, that is very often associated with colder winters uh, for America as well. Uh, something else I've not discussed is the impact for the western part of America. I know that around California uh, and those sort of areas in the southwestern parts of the states, you are experiencing uh, a very severe drought. I think we're going to see uh, that drought being broken the, uh, this winter. I think we will get uh, a good deal of low pressure coming in off the Pacific Ocean onto the western side of uh, the Pacific side of America. And I think that will break the drought, at least for a time, um, in the southwestern parts of the state. So putting it all together, my preliminary sort of uh, expectation, uh, if you like, uh, for um, this winter is for a lot of low pressure to be in this uh, sort of zone, particularly because of the El Nino, but also because we've got a very warm PDO. Uh, all of this uh, warmth here is telling us that we've got uh, a strong PDO at the moment, strong uh, uh, positive PDO Pacific Decadal Oscillation. And if you put that together with the El Nino, I think we're very likely to have a lot of low pressure uh, around this part of the uh, of the Pacific Ocean, um, I think we're also like to have a lot of high pressure up here, uh, and this will send the jet stream uh, rather like that. Uh, but these areas of low pressure will also enhance the southern branch of the jet stream uh, as well. So we'll be bringing a lot of uh, low pressure through here uh, also. Um, and then we'd like to have low pressure in this sort of zone uh, as well. So many central, southern, uh, sort of southwestern and northeast parts of the state is likely to have a lot of low pressure uh, with loads of ridging up here in the northwest. And I think Canada probably gets a lot of ridging as well. So that is the one complicated factor. And it is different, it is different uh, actually to what we had um, through what we had last winter and winter before about. I think we'll tend to get a lot of high pressure up over Canada. Um, and what that could do is it could stop things getting quite as cold as we've had it the last couple of winters uh, across northern parts of states, particularly central uh, northern parts of, uh, the United, uh, of the United States. That said, I think it will still be a cold winter for most parts of America. Um, uh, and I think the greatest risk of sort of uh, the coldest weather is actually li likely to be in more southern states. This is in terms of the anomaly. Uh, anyway, I think southern states will get a very cold winter compared uh, to the anomaly of that subtracting jet stream and also a lot of precipitation. Some of that precipitation will be rain, some of it going a bit further north 
into the states will be snow that does impact uh, the northeast of states as well with the risk of snow central northern uh, states probably like to be cold and dry and not as brutally cold as we had last winter the northwest around seattle places like that i think we're likely to have more in way of high pressure a drier warmer uh, winter is likely and then coming down into the southwest places like california um nevada oklahoma i think those areas are likely to get uh, quite a lot of heavy rain driving in off the Atlantic. That rain will probably affect Texas as well, so it could be quite uh, a wet uh, winter for parts of Texas with that southerly tracking jet stream. I'm not sure what it always does for the southeast, so Florida could have a lot of dry weather and be fairly warm as well, uh, I think. So that could be the place to go uh, this winter. Just one thought last thing I want to talk about with these preliminary thoughts. And that is the drop in temperature that's occurring once we get through to the start of next year. So these are the dates uh, along the bottom of the chart. We've got January 2016 just here. And you can see that there is a big drop in temperature occurring through the equatorial Pacific central part of the actual Pacific anyway, as you get through into the start of the year. So by the time you get through to April, for instance, we're almost down uh, sort of neutral territory. This could well be the start of La Nina uh, developing for next year. Uh, when you have an El Nino, very often the next year you will flip and get the reverse. So instead of getting warm water through the equatorial Pacific, you get cold water coming up through the equatorial Pacific. That's probably what we're seeing there. Probably the model just begin to pick up on the start of that running it'll be very interesting how quick that develops because if it develops quickly and early and still in the winter it will impact uh the situation in america what will happen is that the jet stream will go north uh will start to build high pressure uh, in across many parts of the states through uh these areas just here everywhere where we had that suddenly tracking jet stream and the risk of cold weather will start to get rigid, and uh, up in the northwest we'll get troughs of low pressure uh, developing through Alaska, down into the west side of Canada, uh, and then through into northwest parts of America. Uh, we'll start to see low pressure coming through in this uh, area, and much of uh, Canada will start to find low pressure coming through as well. So if landing you develops, uh, and I'll just put that just here, uh, so you know that this is uh, just a what if really. Um, if landing uh, was to develop early on, uh, say around January uh, 2016, it could, could, could just change the late winter pattern. See a, a, a turnaround in the late winter pattern, particularly for February and March, uh, it could turn significantly drier and milder uh, for the latter part of the winter. My guess is that uh, any change landing uh, will be later on uh, next year, so from March, April onwards, it won't uh, affect the winter pattern. But just wanted to throw it in because there's a big drop uh, in the temperature anomaly that the CFSV2 is picking up on for the start of next year. Um, if that's enough to start to change the pattern into a more landing year type setup early on uh, in the year, then it could allow for a milder and drier pattern for many parts of America, not the northwest where it turns colder and wetter, but for many parts of America, it could allow for a drier and milder late winter pattern. If this La Nina does progress through next year, then next winter, uh, 20, what is it, 2016, 2017, that will have a very, very, very different pattern across America compared to uh, what we've had over the past winters, what we're probably going to have uh, for this winter. So this could be the last of the cold winters for a, a little while uh, if it does indeed turn out uh, to be a cold winter in America. So that's the preliminary uh, thoughts anyway from, uh, from GasWeathers.com. Remember there's a full written report just going through all of this uh, again at website. I've got the link to uh, the page at Gazdorviz here on YouTube in the description. Uh, you can click the link and you'll be able to go off um, and read the uh, written report. And of course, when we do the final forecast uh, in October, I think it'll be the 15th of October, the final forecast for America, you'll uh, be able to see it on that page at Gazdorviz as well. Okay, I hope you found the video interesting. I think it's going to be another very interesting winter for many parts uh, of America. Um, 
But uh, it's not the final word uh, on the matter, so come back in October uh, and uh, we'll have the definitive forecast. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.